told you what would happen if you broke my heart. Now you're getting it. <laughs> a little bit of cold blood here, a little bit of cold blood there, and there. You know how easy it was to get one of your hairs? You were shedding hair these days like a golden retriever after a bath in tepilatory cream. Now you're getting it. One in the wrist, pow! Oh, did you break your wrist? One in the hand, oh, did you cut your finger? And soon you will drop down these stairs to... Oh, oh, oh. Ah, this looks bad. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, uh. Foo, foo, foo. So nothing. Uh, let's start this video. Today I wanted to talk about talent development in esports, but generally in Overwatch. And a part of it is also applicable to League of Legends, simply because franchise leagues pose a couple of issues for new talent to come up. There are some hard barriers, definitely contractually, but also in terms of exposure, that need to be overcome. So, I guess the best way I could frame this is in order to introduce, or reintroduce really, because I'm confident you've seen these terms before, the both terms intelligent design and natural selection, right? So I will slightly reframe those in order to make them useful for us, but in general, I think these should be pretty straightforward. So intelligent design is an intelligent agent making decisions and trying to create something and in, therefore um, to, and in our case, to develop teams, to develop players, to develop certain skill sets, right? Now, other than the godly vision of intelligent design, Intelligent design in terms of esports is not all knowing, right? This is important to, to realize, even though it's fairly obvious, right? Nobody is really omniscient, are they? Now, one such instance of uh, intelligent design would be GGEA. Now you ask, what is GGEA? GGEA is the GG Esports Academy. They are, I think, a a company of infinite that are also uh, entwined with optic gaming and therefore with the use and outlaws, right? So the, it, they do more than just Overwatch. They also do uh, Call of Duty. I'm not sure if they want to uh, branch out into other esports, but it seems likely, right? So the name or the face of GGAA for, um, for Overwatch is a guy called Alakis, and most of you probably know Alakis because he's a known entity in Overwatch. When uh, created Laser Kittens and already had a talent agency approach with Laser Kittens, right? So he signed uh, a huge amount of players, then fields a contenders team. We're also pretty good in uh, contenders. Uh, players that made it big, like a lot of his players are now in, at least in contenders teams, but also someone like a Nemtuno is now obviously on the fusion and is a constant starter. So the Alakus concept has proven to work to a degree, right? So Alakus is obviously not alone at this, right? So he has different skill sets around him and that's different people or different uh, entities just, you know, chipping in, you know, just telling you what, what they know about Overwatch. Um, and trying to filter the cream from the crop, right? So they try to assemble teams. The interesting part about GGEA is that, is that they seem to manage a bunch of their academy teams, right? So it's not all of them, because for instance, I know that the British Hurricane, the contenders team for London Spitfire, was a team that was previously created, then was signed on, that was then was uh, augmented a little bit with uh, together with a London Spitfire, right? So GGA has an idea of what Overwatch is like, and we we will represent this in this box, right? It's a pretty big box, right? Like um, this is definitely a competent team, right? And I'll, I'll definitely don't claim to say otherwise. They are a competent bunch of people, generally from the esports world, definitely also from Overwatch, and they keep adding to this, right? So now we think, okay, 
the other outward bubble here is the Overwatch League, right? So the Overwatch League, and I don't want to overemphasize this too much, but yeah, I guess this is fine. The Overwatch League, the entirety of all teams also have an idea of what Overwatch is like, right? So this is this is probably something like this. And what is also important to say is that these two groups can keep also exchanging ideas, right? So ideas go in and out, in and out, and therefore both of their bubbles keep uh, increasing. Now, one thing that's also um, probably right to say is that knowledge gets lost along the way. And that's just also a natural progression of uh, knowledge in general for humans. But yeah, it's not just that it only keeps growing, but you know, you lose a, lose a couple of inches here, you lose a couple of inches there, maybe someone exits the, uh, the market and he was the only one to express that specific part of knowledge because he had some sick talent, right? But now let's put over a filter of what we can expect Overwatch. So the entirety of Overwatch, everything that's conclusive to winning is in here, right? So, there are some of these, you know, extensions or crevices here that are rather further, far away, right? And they need to be, and obviously the Overwatch League and GGEA try to um, fill. And it's probably also fair to say that, for instance, probably each GGEA is more, something more like this, right? Where GGEA also has information or knowledge that isn't quite yet even in the Overwatch League teams, not even in Houston, right? because um, they are developing new talent and naturally get in contact with new concepts earlier than the Overwatch League would, right? So we have all of this, right? And this is the entirety of everything that's good. Entire, entirety of, oh shit, uh, well, everything <laughs> that is good about, or everything that is conclusive to winning in Overwatch, okay? So, now how do we uncover these things? Because this boot box keeps growing, right? Yes, definitely. This this bubble keeps growing, right? This is a rough assumption of what we know. It, it, for all we know, it could also be much larger, right? Like, maybe we look back in five years and think, okay, this is a terrible representation of what we missed about Overwatch. Maybe we have some sick developments in old economy, in definitely, like, how you exchange uh, trades when you pull out of a fight or whatever, right? There's a lot of um, areas where we could still improve in terms of Overwatch, right? So now in comes the second method, and that's natural selection, right? So we put it here. Intelligent design also just quickly to note, it's not that they only do intel uh, intelligent design, GGA, because what they also do is a certain amount of natural selection. Because I know the GGEA crew and definitely also the Overwatch League teams scrimmed a bunch of talent, right? Like, they they basically, in order to assemble, they they didn't sleep for, for a couple of weeks in order to assemble these teams, right? So to be very fair with them. Now, here's the uphill battle for an entity that has intelligent design, but finite, and I mean this in the most literal terms, finite resources, right? Is that natural selection offers a solution to issues by throwing numbers at it, right? So only the strongest survive, right? And this would be something like the open series and contenders trials, right? So here we have a team, right? They are six to nine individuals and they all have different uh, shapes and sizes and there's definitely also an element of inter uh, intelligent design because these aren't zombies right they aren't completely clueless right they are they definitely occupy if we were to represent it a much much smaller uh field of what is there to know of about overwatch and i would probably like so the individual team is very unlikely to be outside of these boxes, right? Like maybe ever so slightly, right? Someone maybe knows like a cutesy trick on a on a different uh, character that nobody here seems to employ. So that would be one thing, right? But it, it's not really only one team, is it, right? It is like a bunch of teams, right? Like it is thousands of teams, in fact, right? So you have 
um, a bunch of teams coming in here, and I think, well, it's hard to say, but there were a bunch of uh, signups in um, in Contenders Korea. There were a bunch, uh, so that was the biggest group as far as I know. Uh, it was hard to get actual numbers for everything, but I will say, let's say we have about 5,000 teams globally, right? So 5,000 teams individually try to actualize their idea of what is good about Overwatch. And let's not forget, it's very unlikely because of that number, because it's 5,000 times, I mean, what would be the average here? Probably seven players, um, if that's, yeah, maybe. Uh, that would be 35,000 uh, players, right? So 35,000 players that also in themselves have some sort of intelligent design in themselves that create their uh, team play um, would be here to make decisions, right? And some of them have talent that are directly able to access some of these crevices, right? Some of them will have inherent talent that you won't find in the Overwatch League, right? Now, there are these thousands of teams, right? And I keep adding them, and I probably, I obviously can't add 3, uh, 5,000 teams here, but you get the idea, right? So this group basically is selected for. So they compete against each other, and there's a high iteration of uh, games, right? So if we have, and they're obviously they are in different regions, and they are l limited in that regard, and they definitely don't have access to all the good things that GGEA brings, such as high-quality coaching, uh, facilities, definitely the academy teams offer salaries. So they are also doing, all probably doing it from their basement, basically, right? But still, when these, like, th these entities here, right? So they keep fighting against each other, and eventually, through the tournament bracket, Two teams, in terms of contenders um, NA, because there's only two trial slots right now, because the rest are occupied by um, Envision, for instance, or I, I think FaZe gave up theirs, which made it uh, ultimately two. So, two teams from, from open trials come in, and they have a completely new idea of Overwatch, right? So, they are selected for by a pretty rigorous system, right? And no, it's not 5,000 people against each other, I'm not saying that. But probably a better point to make would here be to talk about Contenders Korea, where, yes, certain teams still have slots, but there's a, a definitely a vacuum, and they also had the biggest amount of teams signing up. I think it was 1,200 here, right? So. 1,200 teams sign up for Contenders Korea. They are already a high talent region. And they keep playing and playing. And at the end, the best teams come out. And the interesting part also is that we can expect three or at least two Contender seasons this year. So that process comes up again and again and again, right? So this is a reiterative process with high amounts of iteration. So you have a lot of times where these um, decisions of natural selection are being done, right? So naturally, I would suggest that a healthy amount, and they are, <laughs> I mean, it's hard to graphically represent because a healthy amount of these, um, of these teams will likely also have, I mean, most of it will be just things that aren't conclusive to winning, right? But then there's some cream of the crop. So we take this substrate, if you want, of all that is contenders, right? Like, let's say it's this little team down here, and they aren't coached through the GGA. They, like, they win by new uh, ways that, that are more in this uncleared part, right? They, like, GGA didn't see them coming, Overwatch League didn't see talent like this coming, and that's natural. These p players that are signed by GGA majorly had names before. They are either Korean talents, they are NA or EU talent that ha we have heard before, right, in the years running up to it. There are some new names, 
but it's not the majority, right? Now, is it realistic to think that there's more high-level talent already engaged in the in, or part of teams? I don't think so, right? So, one or two of these teams, it is, I would say, it isn't impossible that they do very well in contenders because they went through such a rigorous process. And definitely for the Korean teams, and Saisho has argued against uh, this against me, and I hope I don't forget to, um, to put the link in the description. I had an argument with Saisho on our Refute This, where he said that he expects Contenders Korea to overtake the Overwatch League eventually in quality because Apex, the Apex season has done with this with the West before. I argue against it, but I still think he has a very good point. And even if they don't overtake it, there will still be players and, uh, and teams that will have something, something out of this red box that these teams didn't see coming. It might be a new player, it might be an entirely new core, it might be new coaches, definitely. And these entities then have knowledge about Overwatch that were previously uncovered and that can't realistically be um, obtained through methods of a talent agency, right? So what does that leave with us with? Does that mean we don't need academies at all? No, that's definitely not true, right? Because a academies offer structure, they offer definitely also um, monetary possibility. What I will say is that one thing that academies don't solve in esports is a, a problem of uh, transportation and locality. Because if you are a an amateur football player, all you can do, it, it, like let's suppose we didn't have the collegiate system or anything of that, how would you interact with other regions. It's very hard to drive around as much, right? And get all the experience and learn from all these different people. And on the internet, that doesn't matter. Like it's literally just ping issues that separates regions. And even there you have seen that um, talent develops itself by playing on high ping and still seeing, you know, all these, these this knowledge that both Overwatch League, GGA and definitely outside of it also have, right? So the the issue of transportation or whatever, or of locality, is definitely solved in esports for the most part. And where it isn't, it is also not as restricting, right? So, what the academy teams do offer is stability, definitely also increasing, because let's see, this, this small team occupies such a small slot. They definitely know much less individually about Overwatch than the entirety of GGA does. And, I mean, look at it uh, in comparison to Overwatch League, right? So maybe maybe we even have to represent it a little bit bigger, but you get the idea, right? But at the chance that someone finds out something, is it not imperative that we keep the natural selective attribute um, afoot, that we keep the online nature, the self-assembling nature of esports, the very easy entry comparatively in esports because yes there is an appeal and the path to pro has been presented as much right you go like open and then you hopefully get recognized by ggea gets fu funneled into a talent agency they then play contenders and then they hand you to overwatch league right that's that's definitely possible and we've also seen already that uh, academy teams attract um interest from the Overwatch League teams to sign certain players and we will see more of this, right? So I hope I was able to sort of um, explain what new opportunities we have, but also what new challenges there are in order to keep increasing this bubble of things we know and in order to achieve like higher levels of Overwatch down the line. Thanks for watching.